Um, so let's get into it. All right, so the first one we're going to be talking about is the MC Lion 3rd verse alt. So there's a world where you could be running the center with uh, Cosmos Signy, which a lot of, I think a lot of people were suggesting and wanting to see. Um, the problem with that is that I don't think it's actually quite good enough. And I think MC Lion going in, I think I'd rather play uh, the uh, Musica as a center if I was going to go into um, the, the, the Cosmos Signy. Um, I actually don't care at all about MC Lion's first ability, which is that when you attack, sometimes you can crush a life cloth if you reveal a, a Signy with guard. Sometimes if it's got a level one, you draw a card, right? Like this is a this is a good ability, and you will draw a card off of it. I believe the the answer is about fifty percent of the time in this deck. Um, I'll let you decide whether or not that's good. Uh, the answer is you're probably going to draw a single card off of MC Lion before the game's over. Um, cool. Uh, drawing a card is not bad because one card in hand means that's something you can enter later, even if it's not any good. Um, and that's really what you're looking for with this card draw is just to kind of keep a hand and keep the enter flowing. Outside of that, the main ability for this is the fact that you can target a Signy on your opponent's field and return it to its hand. That is the reason you're going to play this MC Lion over any other uh, white L rigs when you're making this white aggro shell tick. Um, the other ones that we're playing is Akino Bye Bye and Akino Rock. Again, these are just um, assist L rigs that will allow you to bounce things to the opponent's hand. Um, and then we're playing Ange level one. This is another one that bounces to the hand. And then Ange level two, which this one bounces to the hand and trashes something. The other thing that we're playing is Burning Curiosity and White Heaven. Uh, Burning Curiosity allowing you to probably exceed. Um, you can hold the exceed if you don't want to, because we do run Miracle Draw here. But it's it's re really neither here nor there. You could you could do it if you feel like you want to keep Enter Depriving. And then White Heaven allowing you to do two lanes and also Enter Deprive as well. You'll notice something in common with literally the entire L Rig deck, which is, uh, if we count it, that's removal one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. You're literally playing like all of your removal main deck. And you do need, the deck is currently balanced on strike theory. If you want to learn more about strike theory and how it, it's relevant to deck, uh, creating your deck so that way you win by a certain turn, this one winning by turn four latest, um, you can you can check that video out. Uh, this puts almost all of its removal into its main deck, uh, or into its Elric deck. And that is by design. White is not does not have good main deck uh, removal options at its L, or at its main deck options. So you are going to use that time doing other stuff. It needs a little bit of removal, and we've put that little bit of removal in there. But it doesn't need a ton of removal into its main deck to get you to the final amounts that you need to win. Um, oh, that's totally wrong here. Uh, let's go fix that one real quick. Uh, uh, sometimes when you import this, it just, uh, you know, gets the wrong card, but that's okay. Here we go. <laughs> we are now up to the right one. All right. Main deck. We're going to be running this Alifard, um, Natural Planet. Now, there has been a lot of discussion, basically, whether or not you run this or you run f Light, which allows you to, um, get spells off of the attack, and you get to look at the top three. The answer is, I like Alifard better. And the reason why is Alifard roughly has a 45% uh, hit rate with this deck and you run 18 level ones. If you were to go up to 20 level ones, then you would end up with somewhere around 50% as the hit rate. Um, but 45% for a draw on level one is where I want to be at. At some point, I'm going to replace this. This is the weakest card in the deck. But right now, I don't see any real need to replace this. There are versions that are more defensive, right? There's, good, there's in fact, a version out there that allows you to have a uh, 8,000 power level one that you could be running instead. Right now, I'm not... I'm not trying to get to turn five. If I was, I would swap it out for that. I'm trying to get to turn four. And the 45% chance to draw and more importantly to draw a guard could be more relevant than the flashlight now flashlight in order to hit the amount that you want which is about 45 percent as well the equivalent value you need to be running eight spells and i don't love future and slash enough to run it more than a two of but i'm willing to run it as a two of um in the deck 
So that's why this one's there. Again, this is a flex spot. You could probably change it out for something else that you want. Um, this is the, the level one I was talking about. That's like 8,000. So again, you could be running other versions of this type of card, which are just, this is just a, a big white Signy that, that sits here and is hard to kill. I'm running four of these. I think it's it's a good one. Uh, 8,000 is strong enough that it can start killing some level twos that I might be interested in. Um, so that's why we're running this. But again, there's other options here for your level ones if you don't want to go with those types of things. Um, and then we've got Zhao Yun's. This is also another Signy that just sort of dodges Lancelot, dodges uh, Hera, sometimes dodges uh, like souls, which could be relevant. So this is some early game stuff that you might be putting out just just to make it a little more difficult for your opponent to deal with you at the level one slot. And then of course you're running four servants because that's just mandatory in the deck. Moving on to our level twos. Um, let's see here, we've got our level twos usually doing the, oh, and we're running four uh, Lapis, that's right as well. So we're running four Lapis as well, just because this is um, a good life burst, especially with this type of deck. Between these two different things, you're likely going to bounce at least one card to the opponent's hand. You're running four, four, and two of effects that bounce into hand um, on the life burst scenario, as well as two future and slashes. Again, this is by design because we're trying to set up 12 life bursts that do this. So that way we can realistically say we will see two bounce life bursts per game, which will support our nine removal options in the main deck and get us basically the amount of removal we're looking to have in a game of we cross without us actually spending a ton of enter on it or um having to worry about drawing the correct card right so um on this we have the lapis and then we're up in our level two slot we're running this card uh which gets a Two power for every white Elrig on our field. We're running a full set of three white Elrigs, which means that this is a level two 14k, which is obscene. Um, and also has the ability for a life burst uh, that you can vanish something 10,000, sorry, not vanish, bounce 10,000 or lower to the opponent's hand. This is stupid. This is a very, very, very strong card. And it is almost one of the main cores, one of the main draws that you want to be playing white aggro for. Um, to fill it out, we're going to be playing Lynx. Uh, I found that Lynx just being a pay one and bounce any Signy on the opponent's field to their hand just being more relevant than Bow uh, at some point in my testing. And I just found overall these uh, life bursts that are pay one vanish something uh, that's 10, you know, anything on the opponent's field. Uh, the negative 15k, I think, is the black one and then the bounce in, in uh, white, these just end up all overperforming more than you'd expect they would. So it ends up getting the nudge as being uh, the level two fillers that you fill out your deck with if you still need some life bursts in the vanilla slot. Um, and then far as our level threes go, I'm actually running two Whalerine. You should be drawing enough cards in this deck that you are able to discard two of them. You're really only going to do this once though. You're not going to do this multiple times. But, you, but in the end of the, the day, this should allow you to get a little bit more removal just if you need to dig for something. And that's what it's really there for as a two of. We've got a couple ones, and that's because we've got Miracle Draw to dig for things. So I like I like running to uh, Blue Whaler in, in this type of deck. Um, I like it better in mid-range decks, but it gets the job done as one of. I Do not put two of these in your hand and expect to be able to pull both of them off. It'll never happen. Um... This is a uh, Zhang. If you need to switch gears and uh, and and swap to a Han Zhang, um, which will pair really nicely with your level two, that is 14k, and then your Exia, which is also 12k, but boost them up to levels that can't be killed by souls or red removal. Um, this is just a, a way that you can kind of switch swap gears mid-game and go like, all right, let me see if I can get myself defensive for just long enough to get myself attack five in. Uh, it's not super relevant, but you, you can occasionally pull something like this off. And then also to continue the idea of just having some silver bullets here, sometimes you just need one extra damage and the lanes are cluttered and you just can't get them with your, because you're out of main, you're out of L rig removal. Then this will option can also get you there it you tap everything you control to do it 
Um, but it ends up being an okay option to just get a little bit more reach. Most of the time, it's going to be enter um, as you need to treat it as such. These again, this one and this one are flex spots here at the level three that you could be doing something else. I just didn't have it in me to put more fur and slashes in there. So I, that was where I ended up with. Uh, and the last uh, slot here on our level threes is Exia. Exia is just a good. It's never gonna. It's never gonna win you the game. It's just a. It's just a road bump. You put it out there as a haymaker to make your opponents work for the win, um, and that's all it does, right? You're not really planning on making it stick around forever and ever. Um, to fill out our last slots, we've got some spells here. We've got Miracle Draw. Again, this is what's gonna allow you to just sort of hit the hit everything that you're looking for and if you end up with some silver bullets you might want to wait on the miracle draw i'd see a lot of people do this like turn one or turn two i i like my miracle draws turn three and turn four because it lets me find my silver bullets that i need to win the game um and it can get also it can get it can get spells so it can get future and splash for example future and slash i don't like the front side it has an amazing life burst uh, which is what the main reason you play it um but it, sometimes you do end up with five enter and you just need to bounce one other thing. So it ends up being a last ditch effort to try to get yourself fully out there. You can see that uh, instead of running four fusion slashes, I run two and two whale rings. That's sort of on purpose because I like the idea of being able to do that more. Um, I think there's a world where you can run um, Cassiopeia in this deck too, and it would be perfectly fine as maybe a two of, probably maybe swap out the blue railer in, but I like immediacy. Um, just, just thoughts about the deck in general. So this is, uh, Lion, uh, 2.0, which ends up just being the core of your, uh, white aggro deck. This deck won't change very much other than swap out the center for a, um, Tama when that eventually comes out in the next set, I believe. Um, moving right along, let's actually talk about the, um, let's talk about the next, uh, Lion deck, right? So I actually have changed nothing from my old Lion combo deck. It doesn't get any new cards that are worth adding, and I don't think there's any cards that need to be added. I actually still think this is a tier A deck just on its own, and you don't need to swap a thing out. You end up with a pretty okay sort of aggro deck. You've got um, you've got Reverb, which really only ever is uh, prevent one damage just to try to get you to that turn four. Right, and it, you're if you go, you're not going past turn four with this deck. You are you're at, you're trying to initiate your combo and win the game. You've got um, the crossfade, which is quite good. I think there's a world where you swap out scratch now for um, the double crush. That's scratch two, um, just because you might want to cover the bases with atomic now. Atomic likes to do lane fillers and also bring things back that can remove other options. So there's a, there's an argument to be made for Scratch 2. I'm not quite there yet myself, um, but I just wanted to let you guys know there's an argument to be made for it. You're still running Burning Curiosity just because you need a little bit more punch in the late game, and Burning Curiosity is what the doctor ordered. It gets you there. Um, everything else remains the same. You're doing the normal card filtering that you normally do in order to um, get yourself... A endless punchline kicked off and to remind you what endless punchline does guys because you might be new um to the channel in which case welcome uh endless punchline you're looking to filter out all your level ones and level twos from the deck to leave your deck bottom heavy where it's just pretty much filled with level threes endless punchline goes off and allows you to hit for three l rig attacks and you win the game based on that you've got the core here to set yourself up for that you've got a ton of filtering right you've got the pj maps you've got the arc wins you got good digs, you've got Ishikiri Marus, and you got the Hanioles, all of the things necessary to do it. Uh, the deck's cheating on level ones, it's down to four it's down to 14 level ones, and it can cheat on that because it's got rapid accumulation. Basically, you're really going to um, throw away any cards in your opening hand that aren't level ones. So you're almost always guaranteed to at least start with an opener of two level ones. Then after that, the rapid accumulation lets you basically just have a little bit of air in your deck that you can then use to uh, just draw cards. You're never exceeding with it, by the way. You are only ever using it to make your L-Rig attack and draw you a card. Um, realistically, if you wanted to add even more air to the deck, you could probably take out some amount of good digs or um, even like Lancelots or a Deafening Inferno or maybe Internal Influence and go up on the rapid accumulation. I probably wouldn't go past number three, 
but that's something you could risk for the biscuit if you wanted to. Uh, Rapid Accumulation, I think this is the only deck where I really feel confident in its inclusion. Um, by being just straight up gas, like, right, it's just a pocket of air, it allows you to more make your deck hit off of, more likely to hit off of your um, your endless punchline while simultaneously not threatening you to have a terrible board because you should cat if you draw it you should cash it in immediately right you should just cash it in because you don't want it to be in your hand it's the worst place it can be is in your hand it's best if it's in the deck or it's in the it's in the enter or it's in the trash um but in the deck it's actually quite powerful as as a card and just chilling in your deck to make it so that way you can compact your resources and you can get away with 14 level ones and not have your level threes and spells be ginormous you know um, so that's the, that's the card jockey deck. It still does the job, still endless punchline for the win. I still think it's quite a strong deck. Moving right along, let's keep the aggro train rolling, I guess, and let's talk about X. Um, for anyone who hasn't seen the X, uh, deck in its, uh, its originality, um, which you guys should check out my, my, uh, the X, uh, the X, the X deck tech is still quite relevant. So you should check out the older video of X. Um, what has changed from it? The answer is not quite much. Uh, just a kickoff reminder for people who need to know what X's mainly main job is. Uh, it ends up putting out these things called souls. Uh, the souls are either removal or enter, depending on which soul you attach. It digs for guards using its uh, ability to attach souls, as well as some other dig effects in the deck to find uh, guards and let it survive a little bit longer, probably till turn four. The main draw for it is though that you're going to change, you're going to exceed out one of your pieces and exclude one of your pieces um, to give things assassin and go under walls. Uh, and in that it excels. The other main draw is that it has a lot of enter burn. So it can keep opponents, especially if you really know your opponent's assist L rig costs, you can keep them off the assist L rigs for long enough for you to win the game. Um, it's running the same deck main or L rig deck as it normally would. X recovery because X's main weakness is that it has the worst ability to draw cards in the world. You can dig for cards, but you do not gain card advantage, so you need the X recovery to do so. And X, uh, sorry, the Deus shield as well, just because you're going to go up against other aggro decks, and you need the shield in order to get yourself some amount of protecting yourself to get to turn four again this is not a turn three deck this is a turn four deck um you are also playing uh machina smash and machina wing slash just to help push the aggro uh forward in your turn two and turn one which is quite valuable because you don't have a ton of lane openers in there so you depend on these to basically be your lane openers and as far as the piece goes i've decided against uh running um i've decided against running the um the xeno cluster basically every time i run xeno cluster i end up in a scenario where yeah sometimes xeno cluster would save me especially if i was going turn or on if i was on the play right if i'm turn if i play the first turn i'm getting attacked turn two against the mirror it ends up being pretty valuable there but there is a world now where we're wanting to run death deck a lot of the atomic decks for example are going to filter itself down to a point where death deck becomes valuable and there's probably more games than I want to care to admit going to turn five and maybe even turn six now where death deck is going to be more valuable. This still could be Xeno cluster depending on what you decide to do. If you're playing a lot of X's and a lot of Deus's and Deus aggro's in the, the, the mirror, you probably want to swap this over to Xeno cluster. Um, at the end of the day, you're probably, this is the piece that you're going to be excluding away uh, for the once a game ability of uh, X, and because of that, you just should you just should run you should just just note that this is really a five percent um, piece. Uh, realistically, you're going to be running trigger victory a uh, thousand times out of ten. You're going to be playing trigger victory for for the the win here, and so de death deck is just something that you add extra there and is totally swappable later down the line. One of the reasons why I'm also running death deck is I think there's going to be a non-zero amount of people who are running um, Miku Miku and their team piece, which counters uh, trigger victory. And in that scenario, the correct move is to play death deck instead of your trigger of victory. And then, uh, then uh, once a game away, your trigger of victory, 
to uh, get double assassin. Just a heads up, guys. That's what you're going to want to be doing. Um, it minimizes the impact of Miku Miku, for example. Um, moving right along into the uh, main deck here. We're playing uh, four X-Ax. Uh, this is the uh, multicolored. You would be playing six X-Ax if you had the choice and we were able to give the multicolored. This is probably one of the most important pieces for the deck. And you'd be surprised how often you bring it back to your hand just to reuse it as enter constantly. Um, because you just need access to black enter and you're not willing to commit having a ton of, like, for example, Caesars uh, because you have Hera. Um, that being said, we are running a few black Signies. Um, let's talk about Ituashi. I still think we're in a world where we're running two Ituashis uh, as a mandatory part of the core. At some point, we'll cut back from those because they are not always relevant, but there are more powerful level ones coming up in, in Red's future. But for now, this is a good way to support our Enter Burn um, in level one. We're also running for Cargo. Again, this is not exactly Enter Burn, but it is a way to turn on Morox for free, as well as um, a non-insignificant amount of times that you use it to thin out the opponent's deck, or they stack something on top and you use it to just get rid of whatever's on top. But more often than not, it's color screwing. Um, you're trying to keep your opponent's X decks off of black, and you're trying to potentially keep uh, greedy three-color decks off of their third color with this this cargo. Plus, it's got an okay life burst, so at the end of the day, it's always pretty relevant. Uh, you're running with Celebres here. Um, this is just bread and butter. It's got a good life burst. It's got 5,000 power. At some point, it'll start dwindling in number, but we're not quite there yet in terms of power creep. Um, and aside from that, We've got our four servants, of course, as always, because they are quite good. Moving into our level twos, you'll see that one of the new cards that we're adding in here is a Caesar. Um, this is just something that is sort of like, you could occasionally pull it off with Trigger Victory. Um, sometimes you want a Caesar over a Hera, for example, because you want to assassin through when the opponent has an Exia. So it's just a one of. Um, it's not super, super, super relevant. Prior to this, I was playing uh, the card that if it was in the center lane, it would mill the opponent. Um, just to be clear of what this deck does for, uh, I guess, the audio listeners, uh, it has an enter ability of black. If there are seven or more cards in your trash, this opponent, this Signy gets constant. As long as there's a Signy in front of this with power 5,000 or lower, then it gains assassin until end of turn. Um, just allows you to have a silver bullet, something that you could trigger a victory or death deck back uh, to your hand if you need it. Um, moving along into our, our other uh, tur like twos that we have, and I needed some amount of black, by the way, which is why the Caesar's in there. Again, if I could make that black content happen by having more of the multicolors, I would probably get rid of Caesar and probably go up in this number. This is Nabe no uh, Tsun Crimson General. This is a level two that has an auto ability as at the beginning of your attack phase, if there are three or more red signy in your field with different names, your opponent has two or more cards in their enter zone. They have to put one of their cards from their enter zone to their trash. So this is the enter burn hero we've been waiting for. Um, the enter burn at level two is, is very good. I like it more than Ituashi, but still necessary evils. You got to run a little bit of Ituashis right now at level one, I think. Um, this allows you to set up those turns where you can enter burn your opponent by going Kentoki Kentoki um, Ituashi. Um, and I, I, I like, I really like those turns. Um, and again, sometimes you got to do that with I Ituashi. Uh, so that's why you've got the still necessary evil of the level one Ituashi. But I really like Nabe a lot. And realistically, I would have liked this at three uh, over that Caesar but I just, I just needed a little bit more black in the deck currently as it, as it stands. Um, and I believe that's all of our level twos aside from the Morax. We're still playing two Moraxes. At some point, I, I've been su not super impressed with Morax. They're okay. Um, but actually, I found that the Punisher thing, giving the opponent this choice, means that they're always going to make the right choice for them, and that's sometimes the wrong choice for you. Um, so I will eventually swap Moraxes out, even to a point where I think maybe it might be okay to swap Morax for the level two that just came that's coming out with this set that you can pay and enter and then vanish target Signy on the opponent's field verbatim. Um, 
But I, I'm not sure. This deck is a little tight with Enter sometimes, too, because it often wants to be able to Deus Shield for all it's worth. So I don't know. I don't know if that's the, the, the rub or not. But this is this is still something I'm playing as a level 2 right now, just because I think it's fine. Moving on to our level 3s, uh, we start with four Kentokis. Uh, this is overperforming. This is the best card in the deck. This is one of the reasons you play the deck in team and one of the reasons why you play specifically X so that way you can have two of these out in one turn like a crazy person because of the harmony cost um, but being able to gain assassin on demand and more importantly being able to enter burn is just this card is always perfect on turn three and turn four it's just fantastic you're running one of steampunk um, realistically an argument could be made to be running two of steampunks because most of the time you end this ends up being enter this, the reason this card exists is because your opponent will try to mill you out sometimes with blue decks and will try to discard you out with blue decks. And Steampunk's main job is to basically be able to be protection against that. You can bring it back every turn. Um, yes, it can also be removal, but for most of the time, uh, it is not removal. It's just a way to uh, go a little bit longer in the game, especially if you've reserved your uh, souls correctly against in a long game. But that's one of your level threes. Um... We're also running uh, one Anna Mirage. Um, the idea here is we're running one Anna Mirage and we're running uh, some amount of Nobunagas. I think I skipped the Nobunagas. Here they are. Um, and these are basically all the equivalent, right? They're just Rise Signies that aren't spells that also can remove opponent's Signies. Uh, you like Nobunaga a little bit better because it's red and gets Double Crush. Sometimes you like Anna Mirage just because it can very easily get you a 13k, uh, and it's got a more relevant life burst. Anyways, I think two Nobunagas, one Anna Mirage is pretty much standard for all X decks moving forward, too. Um, then we're running a new card here, and this is one of the reasons that X is getting an upgrade. Uh, you can run Diabride. Um, Diabride is got an ability where once per turn, when a reg signal on your field is targeted by your opponent's effect, the opponent has to put one of their red enter into their trash. It also has a discard effect, which allows you to discard one card from your hand. You can look at the top two cards of your deck, put one of those into your hand, right, and the other one in your trash. The trash is actually relevant. That's actually a pretty good place for various things. For example, you might see a steampunk on the top, and you might go, yep, I'll take the other card, put that steampunk in the trash, where it ends up being a better. It's better in the trash than it is in your hand. Um, and being able to dig too deep for one is not quite... Devil Stinger levels of deep, and there's a world where I still want some amount of Devil Stingers in this deck just because it digs so deep, but digging too deep is pretty good and something where red wants to be at. You end up with awkward hands sometimes with Devil Stingers, where you really only have one card in the mid game where you can give up that that card, um, and so you you wouldn't be able to dig as deeply anywhere. It's where Diabride gets you a little bit more bang for your buck. It also has a life burst. Um, Red struggles with having life bursts in their level threes, um, and you can't have a ton of these target upped uh, Signy and vanish it, and or draw a card life bursts. Uh, but you can have some amount, so this ends up being the default best uh, one for Red right now. Uh, I think it's quite good. It allows you to do the Enter Burn package a little bit more and also adds a little bit more utility for guard searching or for trying to find more ways to open up lanes and maybe get a Nobunaga, Double Crush, cool, win, win that way. I think that ends up being a very, very good choice. Um, moving right along, let's talk about um, the Deus Aggro deck here. Uh, oh, wait, this isn't Deus Aggro. This is the Deus Aggro deck. Great. Um... So another uh, cue in for anyone who's new into We Cross and listening. Deus um, has a great ability where you can basically do its once a game ability and pull three cards from your trash and put them into your hand. It's also got a bunch of um, souls like X also, where both of them are just removal. Um, so you end up being with this great L rig that is got removal built into it and then also has a little bit of redundancy built into it. So you can end up playing with a little bit more silver bullets than the average aggro deck. Or if you end up in mid range, you can end up playing with more things that will help you win the game with the mid range than the mid range decks are used to. Um, either way, let's go right into talking about what the L rig deck is giving you. We're playing the same stuff that we normally would, which is uh, Machina Wing Slash, Machina Bind, X Echo, X Crossfire. X Crossfire surprises everyone still for some reason that it 
uh, enter burns the opponent. The trick is that you want to be targeting a level one with this, so you're only paying one to vanish something in an open lane while simultaneously enter burning them, probably the thing that you just killed. Um, and since it's on the assist, they can't Xeno cluster that. Um, so you're not really focusing on the enter burn like X is, but you can sometimes sneak out a win on turn four because of the fact that they thought they were going to be able to have their three stop Elrig readily available, and you stop that by snagging an enter or two. Um, Machina Bind ends up being completely normal and something that you've got to be running um, just because we don't have shield here. And Bind does a pretty good job at trying to trying to slow the opponent down so you don't get completely run over by aggro. Um, and then the last pieces that we're running is Trigger of Victory. Again, one of the reasons why you want to be playing in team. Just being able to burn an opponent's enter and get back a card from your trash is very strong on its own. But we're also running one of the new cards. Uh, that's Machina Guardian Dragon MGD. Um, and we're doing this again. This is one of the ones you're probably going to once a game ability this away 90% of the time. Uh, but there are 10% of the times where the opponent's playing um, something like a, uh, for example, a um, is is running a uh, a, a team like uh, Lion or is running a, a Glory Grow from uh, No Limit. And this becomes more valuable just because you'll cash it out and survive that turn uh, than Trigger a Victory is. So just keep it in mind. That's something that you, you've you got the ability to occasionally do. Sometimes they do something interesting, like they add an L-Rig effect uh, to it. So like when this L-Rig attacks, you can up it and then you can attack again. Whereas uh, Machina Guardian Dragon is going to be able to survive you that type of stuff. Let's jump into the main uh, deck. Uh, and I'm going to skip something here, and then we'll talk about it in retrospect. So we've got Baphomet. This is going to mill you as well as be a pretty big... Uh, wall to make it life harder for your opponent it's just for board positioning you're not walling them out by any stretch but also being a 7,000 attacker is also pretty relevant on its own caesar we talked about this just earlier um be this is this is the deck where caesar is going to tick a lot more easily because caesar is going to have a lot more cards and trash readily available sometimes on your turn two it might even be able to gain assassin um but it's a little harder to give it assassin on turn two uh, therefore, it ends up not being a three of or a four of. I think it may go up in later uh, versions of the deck when you get a little bit more self mill. But in the meantime, you're still running your Lancelot here to get yourself um, the red radial removal that you're going to need to be playing since you're playing red. Kentoki, we're playing two of here just because you can only you can't double play them. Um, and luckily with Trigger of Victory, as well as um, Machina, not Machina, excuse me, Deus' ability, if you really need the Enter Burn, you'll be able to get this out of your trash. Um, Nobunaga, again, we swapped the Nobunaga and Ana Mirage in this one, so we're playing two Ana Mirages, one Nobunaga. This is still a very relevant card to be pulling out of your trash sometimes. Um, this deck is much more red, you should note that when playing it because it is almost 50% red, then uh, you should be entering your black cards every turn because you never really know what you're gonna get with your enter because of it. I'm running two Ramel. This is just me admitting that Ma that Deus aggro is actually more hyper aggro than X is. You're really trying to win on turn three or turn four with this, whereas X is trying to win on turn uh, four or turn five. Um, so, that's something that you're probably using this Ramel more likely for. Steampunk, again, we're running a one of. You're going to mill it a lot more easily in this deck than you are in the um, X deck. And it also is a little bit more relevant in this deck because you want access to a little bit more removal, a little like quicker. So Steampunk is just a one of. Um, like I said, the two Ana Mirage were swapping over from Nobunaga. This is the same, the same deal as normal. Buckler, uh, this is the black card that... Uh, gives negative 15 power if you target uh, a level or if you target something on your opponent's field and you pay one. I found that these are overperforming as the new um, vanilla Signy of choice. Um, 
instead of, for example, the ones that do it for free. But at level one, you know, this is this is where you get at. We need more red in our level one. So we're playing four of the Celebres. We're actually playing four Idipoms here too, Iditams. And they're the same card, just one's red, one's black. They both have a life burst that vanishes the opponent. We're still running three Devil Stinger. We're not running Diabride because we're not running enough red to make Diabride worth it. But there's also more value in discarding cards in this deck, whereas this deck actually genuinely likes having cards in its trash. So this ends up being more important to have Devil Stinger just to loot and try to find yourself, um, just try to filter yourself to either cards that will win you the game or cards that will um, that will guard. Um, we're still running one Iresh. Again, this is something that you can pull off as a silver bullet against slower decks like Nova decks or Tamago decks, that you might be using this and just get yourself the last bit of damage you need. Otherwise, it's got a very good life burst, um, or it's just enter four servants per the usual. Now, there's something that sticks out like a sore thumb that I skipped, and that's Buffalo and also the uh, Tengu. Let's talk about what Tengu's ability does, because this is not quite common in the meta, but I think you'll find it being more common, especially in, I believe, the set after the next set, where we can pull Terra Beasts from the trash. Um, Tengu has the ability to, that as long as it's 12,000 or more powered, um, then you will be able to uh, have it not be able to go down, right? It does not, it does not be, can't be downed by your opponent's effects, which means that it can't get Madoka clapped. That's, or, or, uh, or Tamago, um, the Tamago that that downs things as well. Th this is what its main use is for, and it also has the ability to, if it's fifteen, its power is fifteen power or more, fifteen thousand power or more. It gets assassin if you have a lot of enter. You're rarely going to be able to do this, but there's a world where you are able to use your once a game ability to bring back Buffalo, um, which will once you play Buffalo and then you play a Tengu. Uh, the Buffalo will be pumped up to 16k, and the Tengu will be pumped up to 12k, and then now it can't be downed. You can also get another Tengu off of this ability as one of the things that you're pulling back from uh, Deus's Once a Game ability, uh, which will then, if you play Buffalo Tengu Tengu, you end up with a field that has uh, Buffalo at 12k or 20,000, so now it can do removal on attack for 2k. And you have two uh, two Tengus that can't be downed by your opponent's effects. This allows yourself to maneuver yourself in a situation against a Madoka Clap, where you can kind of win that exchange and force the issue regardless. Um, or you can get in a scenario where you go Buffalo, Buffalo, Tengu. And what that will allow you to do is you end up in a scenario where the two Buffaloes pump each other um, and they they go into, um, I believe, one ends up, let me think about this, right, because one of them comes in, uh, and then the other one comes in, and they, they pump, yeah, so one of them will end up 20k, and will still, you'll still be able to do the vanish effect off of it, whereas the Tengu is going to end up in, at, at 15k, and then you'll be able to give it Assassin. So it's not perfect, right? This isn't this isn't a perfect combo, but it's good enough that you can run it in this aggro deck. And if you don't need it, you can just become Enter, or it can just go into an open lane and still attack perfectly fine. Um, so it ends up not being the end of the world, um, and I think it's actually correct to play. I, I played this at my locals, and even though I never needed to pull this off, I was still able to get first place with it. Just because I was like, I could recognize the scenarios where Buffalo Tengu was correct, or I could recognize the scenarios where Buffalo Tengu was not correct, and I paid for it as enter and or just had it in open lane and attacked with it. So something to keep in mind, it's definitely a, a new kind of role that you could be playing, and I do believe that Clap is going to become more important with Atomic Deus existing in the meta that you should be playing this rather than not be playing this. Um, with that in mind, let's talk about Atomic Deus. Um, so Atomic Deus is going to be very strong. I put it as a tier S deck, and that's not necessarily because I think it's going to be the best control deck in the world, or I even think it's going to be the best deck in the world. I think it actually will be the most consistent deck in We Cross, which is why it ends up getting S tier. I don't think it is blatantly as powerful as, for example, things like Card Jockey, 
uh, punchline is because card jockey punchline can just win the game out of nowhere out of you. But um, Deus, Deus doesn't do that. Deus, um, uh, Atomic Deus, just gives you so much redundancy and options that it ends up being one of the only decks that I can confidently say will probably be able to get to turn six uh, because it can position itself correctly on the battlefield. Again, it does everything that Deus does. It's got the removals built in. It's got the um, it's got the once a game ability, um, being able to pull out any sort of combo you need, whether that's to find defensive six things you need for the deck to, to solidify yourself in board positioning to get yourself to turn six or turn five or if you just need the aggro power to push out and finish the game you can get that as well with it um the two pieces we're running we're also running the assist line which is the um which is uh our um our machinas just again redundancy and the assist line that's not showing up in here for some reason is musica or not musica excuse me madoka let me just go ahead and throw those in there just so for completionist sake um that'll be madoka clap and madoka float all right cool so we are running madoka clap and madoka float uh, this gives us a lot of card draw, and Madoka Float gives us a lot of ability, sorry, Madoka Clap gives us a lot of ability to get ourselves to turn five pretty easily. Also, to stem the bleeding, we're running a um, MGD. Now, this is one of the ones you're more likely just to use rather than the Xeno Cluster, but we're packing both conditional pieces because one of these pieces is going to go away for... Um, for Deus's ability, no matter what, pretty much every game that we do it. Um, but which one is up to you, right? If we're playing against an aggro deck like, um, like for example, we're playing against the um, the Endless Punchline deck, you're probably going to keep use this one, and and you're going to exceed away this one once a game away this one. If you're playing against a mid range deck, you might keep this one because. You, they might discard you at some point. You might want to have the card advantage game going for you. Or if you're playing against X, you might want this so that way you can always make sure that you are constantly being able to Madoka clap. Having these two 50% pieces that balance each other out in terms of between all of them, but both of them, you cover 95% of the metagame is quite good. And when you don't need the other one, you just once a game it away. Um, let's get right into what makes this deck tick, which is the Atom Signies. So the reason I say the Atom Signies are so strong is that they end up having uh, just incredible, um, incredible coverage so that together they end up with this deck that just synergizes with each other. So what we're looking for with mid-range is being able to open up lanes early, being able to position ourselves with not necessarily defensive Signy, but Signy that put themselves in an advantageal situation where if they get hit out, we make life difficult for the opponent in, in trying to make it make it difficult to hit us. We're not making it impossible to hit us, right? That would be what control does. We're just making it difficult for the opponent to hit us. And both of those are present in spades with the atomic, which is what makes it what makes it tick. Um Pennsylvania natural uh, plant, uh, natural element over here has the ability of being able to um, discard two atomic signi and give something on the opponent's field negative 8,000. Now, that's huge. That's a huge number. Negative 8,000 will kill all level ones, uh, which is what you're trying to do. It'll also kill some level twos, but mostly it'll kill level ones. And for turn one and two, that's invaluable for getting yourself situated in an attacking position, right? Um, the next one that us up on the lines of things that also remove stuff is uh, Black Phosphorus. And Black Phosphorus has the ability of action, you put one Atomic Signy from your Enter Zone into the trash, you discard one Atomic Signy from your hand, target one of your opponent's Signy on the field, and it gets negative 10,000 power until it's turn. Now, negative 10,000 kills all level twos and below, and sometimes kills level threes as well. It's an enormous amount of power that can be taken out from a level two that we're, we're lacking. So we're already looking at level ones and level twos that deal more, that are able to deal with more Signy than their red and black counterparts normally can for the low, low cost of running Atomic Signy. Now I say the low, low cost of running Atomic Signy, and that's because you could run four of the multicolored in, in this. Now the multicolored make or break the, um, 
the uh, having a crucial number, a critical mass number of, uh, of tribal signi in your deck. The tribal number that you're looking for, by the way, with this deck is around 20 of the tribal. Um, and this deck can, can run that. I believe this deck's running 24, maybe even running 26 of the tribal signi. To fill out the other stuff out of this tribe that we're doing at level 1 and level 2 is we're running 1 Caesar. Again, it's pretty easy with all the amount of discard that we're doing to have our trash be filled up and get ourselves access to some assassin. Again, as a number, as a, as a one of, we can hit this as a, uh, a, a, a silver bullet should we need to with being able to bring things back with Deus's ability. We're also uh, filling it out with, let's see if there's any other level ones that I should be talking about. Of course, the uh, level ones, uh, GA natural planet, Georgia natural planet, Georgia natural element, excuse me. Um, and it has the, it's just a life burst, but the life burst is very, very strong. Draw two cards and the opponent discards a card. While this doesn't directly affect your opponents in terms of their board state, like a lot of these other things do, with with the amount of card draw you need for this deck in order to, to discard stuff, as well as just being able to put your card opponent at card disadvantage, it's very, very strong to be running this. And this is going to be a four of in all Atomic Signy moving forward. Um, our other level one here is Epitom. Again, we just don't have enough life bursts that are also atomic, so this is what we have right now. It does a job, and for what it's worth, does a job pretty good. Um, so I like this card as as our other level ones. And of course, we've got um, our servant. This is, again, your staple. You run in everything you do. It's very strong. Um, Let's move along into our level threes, and you can see a distinct power spike in our level threes. If our level two and level ones weren't quite powerful enough, our H twos have the ability of when this signy rises, you can make the opponent discard a card from the opponent's hand at random, which is quite strong. We're running two Anna Mirages in the deck, and we're also running four H two Os, so six ways to rise on this H two O. And it can even find a way to rise if it needs to. When it enters, you can pay one, and you can draw a card. Drawing a card is good in the Atomic Signy because we also discard quite a bit of cards to our abilities. So refueling in that way is always a very strong move. On its own, this card is perfectly acceptable. On its own, it replaces itself for an enter. So at worst, the floor on this is super low. Um, following it up, we have its natural counterpart which is going to be H2O. Um, you're going to put this on, hopefully, H2, but it's got quite a lot of abilities. The uh, requirement is that it needs to rise on an atomic signy on your field, which you have more than enough of to make this work. Its constant ability is, while this signy has a card under it, if the signy would leave the opponent's field, or sorry, would leave the effect, would leave your field by the opponent's effect during your opponent's turn, you can put all cards under this into the trash instead of making it leave. Now, this isn't going to save you from the negative effects. I did check with Neat on that one. Um, but it will save you from pretty much all the other effects that are going to make it go away. And this is what I mean by just having a good card positioning, right? Like, this is just something that you put out there, and it's like, it's just difficult for the opponents to deal with, which is going to just make them waste more resources on getting rid of it um, correctly. I, it's just it's just tough, right? And then you end up in these scenarios where you can kind of force the opponent to use their negative effects on other cards and have H2 just ling H2O linger there for a long period of time. Its auto ability is when the Signy attacks, um, draw one card of your choice. You can either draw one card or the opponent discards one card from their hand. Normally you're going to make the opponent discard a card from their hand, but drawing one card to find yourself in another guard or some more uh, some more gas to toss under the flames later down the line is perfectly acceptable. Its life burst is draw two cards, then put up to one atomic signy from your hand into the field. Remember, your your PAs and your BPs are going to come into the play and then use their ability to most likely kill something on the opponent's field. So this means that while it's strange, this life burst ends up being more folklore life burst than not. Because you end up doing this and then you end up getting rid of whatever the opponent's other signy is. Um, and you end up closing off two lanes for one life burst. You also are running two Anna Mirages that also have the, like, not the same life burst, but have a similar life burst where you can pull back a atomic signy and then that will allow you to be able to do stuff on the opponent's turn and close down lanes. It's very, very 
very strong. Um, and just helps with the positioning of this deck. Again, this deck doesn't necessarily have the ultimate defense that like Nova has, for example, but it doesn't need to. It's just consistent in slowing the opponent's aggression down enough to get yourself to a mid game, a turn five, turn six, where you're favored to win. Um, Steampunk is going to get you also that. It's just something that you're digging. You're going to be able to bring it back if the opponent's making you discard a guards. It's also pretty good against the opponent's uh, deck if you're playing against the mirror. So a one of, as always, just going to be a pretty good standard choice here. Same thing here, a one of Phalaris. This will allow you to bring it back from your um, with your abilities, your Machina Slash, or Machina Smash, or your Deus um, abilities, and really just mill out your opponent. The, if you were looking to get to turn five, there is a very good chance that this is equal to one life burst on, or like one damage on your opponent, um, especially against other opponents that are also running blue and are a little slower as well. Um, and then to top it off, we're running four random drain. Again, it's got a very good defensive life burst. It's not random in terms of just making your opponent discard a card, um, but it makes your opponent discard a card and that, You'll get to a point where if you are drawing a card with your H2O, you're perfectly happy with that, right? The opponent doesn't have guards. And that's one of the best things that you can do with this deck is by making your opponent discard so much. You're not keeping them on, you're not control, right? You're not making them lose their cards permanently. You're just making them lose their guards. That's what you're trying to do, is you're making them lose their guards so you can make sure that your um, attacks within your L-Rigs area is, is absolutely connecting. Um, and again, I don't think this deck is the strongest deck in the world. I think it is plenty strong, don't get me wrong. This is why I, I think it's stronger than Tomago uh, 2.0 with the blue, white, and uh, and black backing. But I think this deck can still confidently get beat by turn three decks, especially if the life bursts don't go its way. Um, I also think this deck can be long gamed out. I do think... For example, an Akino 2.0 plays very strong against this because it just inevitability to your opponent. It doesn't care if your opponent makes you discard cards because the Akino will just draw you the cards later down the line. Uh, the fact that it can give its its team shadow or make its team hard to kill um, ends up being really relevant in the deck, um, especially for when it's doing its aggro game. So. I think there are counters to this deck. However, that being said, its counters are less consistent overall than this deck is, which is why this deck ends up being closer to the top of the tier less. Consistency pays a lot in Wii Cross. Uh, and so while we're talking about consistency, let's talk about a deck I do think got upgraded, but I don't know how consistent it is. But it's one of my favorite decks, actually, to play in the last se season. And I actually think it's quite strong in this season. I think I put it in top of B tier, um, which is the Madoka uh, 2.0 deck, right? Madoka Vogue X3. So this deck keeps a lot of the things that the old version did. However, I stated in the um, in the older, in, in, the, in my my deck tech on the first one, that I liked the tempo deck and the one that leaned more into blue than I liked white. And I have since come to see that as being an error. Um, I will admit that was a mistake on my end. And luckily, uh, I've seen some people online show me that that was a mistake, as well as my locals. Uh, shout outs to one of my locals in particular who was like, no, you absolutely need to be running Ange and White Heaven in this deck. And to that, they're right. You do. Um, the deck is it lacks a, a certain amount of punch in it. And the the games I, I recognized that the games I was winning were the games that my opponent did not have guards and also were the games that my life bursts were lining up correctly. Um, I can't always count on the life bursts, so I minimized that damage by doing more in the main deck to do damage as well as more in the L-Rig deck to do damage. Now, it's still definitely a tempo deck because it does focus quite a bit on making your opponent discard cards. So I think it's still classified as a tempo deck over an aggro deck, but it is quite aggressive, right? You are consistently pulling off that once a game ability on turn three, turn four with this Madoka deck, uh, which will allow you to bottom the opponent's uh, Signy. 
Um, and you're also playing Ange and Ange level 2. Both of these get rid of the opponent's signy without giving them Enter, which is very strong. You're playing Burning Curiosity because you need to maximize how much damage you're going to be doing to them. And again, there's nothing in this that you're exceeding, so you are playing this with Exceed to 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 enter them out, right? Like, to, to try to reduce the amount of enter. And you're also playing White Heaven. Again, enter denial and also opening up lanes. Now, that's where the the sort of white uh, shell that this is borrowing from ends. Because after that, the main deck is mostly, um, is mostly discard, right? We're running for Bruno to make the opponent discard cards. We're running uh, for Firefly. And... I kind of blanked on this, but one of my, again, the same local that was like, you should be running double white, reminded me that you could run, you could play Firefly Squid, Firefly Squid with double white assists in the same way that you could play Kentoki, Kentoki in uh, X. And it's backbreaking. Being able to make the opponent discard two at random on their turn, as well as just discarding another card of their choice, um, doing, using the uh, Madoka stuff, is obscenely strong um and you can make them discard guards with that so i actually really really like firefly squid i, I cut out all the exias because i just ended up running firefly squids that or um running the uh notre dame which is another card that makes the opponent discard cards uh right and the notre dame is less powerful here because of its life burst is now less relevant and you can discard less cards to keep it around but it's still relevant enough that you could do it in a pinch probably once, maybe not twice, like you could have in the uh, or old version of the deck where you're running more blue and more card draws. Um, but you get enough out of it that I think it's perfectly acceptable here. Um, moving along, you'll notice that I actually swapped over into uh, six of the multicolors here. And you can do this whichever way you like. I just like the art better on this one, so this is why this is the four of. It's just, I, I enjoy having access to multicolored and I, I like having access to blue when I need it so that was something I felt lacking in the last version of the deck and this now has that um, while we're talking out level ones we also have a new card in here um, which is the ability at the beginning of your attack phase you may discard a card from your hand if you do the opponent discards one card from their hand it just helps uh, get your opponent into this I'm just top decking mode which is something that you want to be doing pretty quickly with Madoka um, and then to follow it up, we also have this, again, pushing that discard, right? Like, draw two cards is relevant. This, this deck actually runs out of its hand very quickly. So draw two cards is really nice here. And the, the making the opponent discard is just a uh, cherry on top of it. Um, to push more discard, we're even running uh, four random drains here. Again, it's just more discard. Return to Rebirths. Also more discard, but the deck needed just a little bit more. I hate how enter expensive this is, but it's just enough that you are going to be able to use it um, to make the opponent discard cards as well as um, as well as 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 bounce things to the opponent's hand, right? Like you just again just need a little a little bit of main deck removal because we're running mc line dig and mc line disrespect which i think you need a five uh, you need to get to turn five with this deck even though it's quite aggressive i think that's one of the the reasons that it it does actually win against aggro quite consistently is because it 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 uses that three stop l rig very well um i took out thrilling which scares me a little bit because i i want a, a little bit of card draw in this deck but hamlin's step one of the new cards, which lets you draw two, and then you can put up to one Hamlin Master Trickster from your hand into the field. That Master Trickster then gains constant. This Signy's attack can't be disabled by Signy's effects till end of turn. It's got a life burst of target one of your opponents up Signy. You can discard a card from your hand. If you do, you get to bottom that Signy, which is actually pretty a pretty good trade-off. Um, and it's only running two of those because the hope is that you're making them discard so many that you don't actually need to worry about turning off the negative of Hamlin Master Trickster, which to read it out fully is a level three with the auto ability when the Signy attacks your opponent, opponent mis may discard two cards from their hand. If they do, they disable the Signy's attack. Um, hopefully they've got no cards in hand, which case you're not disabling this attack and you're getting access to its other auto ability, which is at the beginning of your attack phase, 
you can target a level one Signy in front of this Signy. You can pay, or sorry, you can target one Signy. It doesn't have to be a level one. It's any Signy. You may pay blue, blue. If you do, you target that Signy face, you turn that Signy face down. At the end of the turn, if there's no Signy in the same position as this Signy that's face down, you can turn it face back up. If there's a Signy on, on top of it, then it goes to the trash. Right, the normal turn weird turn face down rules, it doesn't exist. Which means that it is a way to open a lane in uh, blue for the low, low cost of blue, blue. Um, inevitably, because of so many Firefly Squids and so many Neutradoms, the opponent shouldn't have cards in their hand. You're massively making them discard at this point. Um, I think this is a very strong deck. This deck is a little bit more aggressive than the uh, Japanese versions are, are putting out there. But I think it needs to be more aggressive based on strike theory. Um, I haven't heard any Japanese uh, podcasters or content creators or deck builders for We Cross ever talk about anything like strike theory. So a lot of the times I think what they're doing is sort of shots in the dark, to be honest with you. Uh, with strike theory, we can actually come up with the exact number of uh, main deck cards that we need to hit the opponent. And the answer is like six, right? And the the reason is because of all of the main deck removal that we're doing and also the sheer amount of card draw that we have in 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 the main deck. When you are playing Firefly Squids, you are drawing a ton of cards. At least you're filtering through a ton of cards. So you might not be getting card advantage, but you'll be able to see a ton of cards in hand. It's not irregular for this deck to go through 30 cards not to mention you've got the madoka's ability of being able to draw a card and discard a card because of this you're always going to find like you're look like, cool your opponent's out of discard in their in their hand they don't have any more cards in hand cool this is the time to find the hamlins um you know this is the time to find the returned rebirths um so this is realistically what you need you don't need a ton of main deck removal but you need a little bit more push in order to get yourself there but you do need a lot of removal in the l rig deck so we're stealing the um the white aggro uh l rig deck shell kind of to to enable this you'll notice that madoka once a game ability has the ability to put something uh from the opponent's uh field into their deck aka removal and in the same way that ties back into uh, Lion's ability of doing the same exact thing. It just gets rid of something on the field and allows you to push aggro. Um, that was a million years of talking, everyone. So I hope you are willing to subscribe for me doing this. That's all of the, I think, currently meta-relevant decks that you are going to want to upgrade for this next season. And uh, good luck. Uh, tell me down below what you're most excited to build and what you'll be repping for this season in We Cross. I probably will be repping Atomic Deus, but I probably will be keeping a Madoka Vogue built on the side just because I really, really do enjoy it. And I actually think this has a lot of ways to win specifically against the, um, the, the Atomic Deus deck that might people might not be suspecting.